All right. Again, thanks everyone so much for joining us today. We are here to talk about Live PC, Give PC. Uh, the main focus today will be on getting started. What are all the basics that you need to know to get your nonprofit's profile set up, uh, get up and running for this year's campaign? My name is Bethany. I'm the Director of Community Engagement here at Mighty Cause, and I've had the pleasure of working with the Community Foundation for I believe five years now uh, in partnership for this event. Uh, we're also joined today by Christine Coleman from the Community Foundation. You'll be hearing from her in just a moment to uh, kick us off from the Park City Community Foundation side of uh, the campaign. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Christine to say just a few words to get us started. Hi everyone, I'm Christine Coleman. I think I may have met a few of you. I can see that there are around 12 people who have joined us today who are new to Live PC, Get PC in some way. So thank you so much for being here. First of all, I wanna say we're really thrilled that we are able to do Live PC, Get PC in this crazy year of COVID-19. And um, in large part, we're able to do that because it's primarily an online event. Um, hosted by Mighty Cause, which has been our wonderful partner for many years. Um, this is our 10th year of Live PC, Get PC, and we're super excited about that and so excited that all of our nonprofit organizations here in Summit County uh, have really made Live PC, Get PC their own. Over 100, I think we had 111 nonprofits who joined us last year and I expect that we'll probably have a couple more this year. So if you guys haven't, um, Bethany's gonna be telling you all about the process for getting registered. Um, but before she does that, I wanna say a couple other things. Um, in case you don't know, the Community Foundation plays an important role here in solving some of our biggest challenges. Uh, we really exist to help ensure that the nonprofit community is strong and resilient. And one of the things, uh, one of the many things that we do is organize uh, Live PC, Give PC, our annual giving day. And this year it's on November 6th, uh, just a couple days after the election, which is going to be interesting. But it's a key fundraiser for many of our nonprofit organizations in Summit County. Some of it, some nonprofits use it as their main fundraiser for the year. And we really are here to support you all in making it as successful as possible. Um, as the marketing director at the Community Foundation, I'm also definitely here to um, support you with any ideas of how you can market it to your constituents and your donors. Um, we're hoping that you all this year will make it bigger than ever and um, take advantage of the fact that it's happening. Uh, so many of our local nonprofits have had to cancel events and galas and we're hoping that live pc give pc is really going to help everyone recoup some funds that may have been lost um, our messaging this year is going to have quite a focus on um, helping to stabilize our nonprofit community um, through covid 19. we also have a really big focus this year on inclusion and we want to have more people than ever of all ages and all backgrounds um, get involved. And um, those are the main things that I had to say, but I want you all to know that you can reach out to me anytime. Um, I'll make sure to chat my email address and contact information. If you have questions, uh, we have a very small but mighty team at the Community Foundation, and uh, we're totally here for you. Oh, and I should say one other thing. We have a goal this year of... Um, getting a uh, 5,500 donors. So last year, our goal was 5,000 donors, and we reached that. And I think we can definitely get to 5,500 donors. Um, this is a participation goal. It's not a goal focused on the amount of money brought in, because we really have the belief that when we get more people participating, that money will come. So whatever you can do to increase your number of donors, um, regardless of how small the donation is, that's totally great. And also just so you know, last year with us, we had 5,102 donors and that was about 12,000 uh, donations from those 5,102 unique donors. 
Um, so that's it for me, and feel free to ask questions throughout. I can chat back um, and also answer any questions you have verbally. All right, Thanks. great. Thanks, you, Bethany. Thanks, Christine. And uh, just to follow up uh, on your point there in terms of kind of the COVID response uh, angle to this year's event, uh, just to share a little bit of extra information, we've had a number of Giving Day partners uh, host campaigns since uh, since March, April, May, some in June, uh, and there's been really, really great response from donors um, across all communities. You know, these events have taken place in a number of different places, and so um, definitely that's an important thing to consider as a part of your messaging for this year, um, but don't be afraid to ask just because it is this unique and crazy year. There is lots of giving happening, so it's it's a great opportunity to really think about how to position your nonprofit as a part of um, your community and, and really what do you bring to the community. And, and there will be another webinar uh, coming up uh, later in September that focuses a little bit more on strategy. And in that webinar, uh, we'll likely be hearing a little bit more from Christine and her expertise, but we'll probably plan to cover some of that uh, a little bit more deeply on that webinar. So make sure to go to the nonprofit toolkit and sign up for that one if you haven't yet. And with that, we will go ahead and jump into what we really are gonna spend most of our time talking about today, which is how to get started uh, as a part of Live PC, Give PC. So whether you are a nonprofit that is new to the campaign this year, or maybe your nonprofit has participated every year, but you're just brand new to the organization and looking to get uh, some information on how to get up and running. We'll cover all that you need to know here today. So the very first step, as Christine mentioned, is going to be to register your nonprofit. If you go to livepcgivepc.org, right there on the main view of the site, you'll see a big orange button that says register. That will allow you to complete a short form that will give the Park City Community Foundation the information that they need about your organization uh, to review and hopefully approve. <clears throat> Once your registration is approved, you will get access to your organization's page on the platform. And then once you have access, you are able to add or remove any additional administrators for your organization. So you can have up to 10 people from within your organization get access to your organization's page. If you need to add your finance person or board director, or whoever it might be, you can manage those administrators in your settings, which I will talk about a little more later. Um, but that's your uh, process to get uh, up and running and get started. So if you haven't yet registered and you're on today's webinar, uh, that is your first and most important to do as soon as we get off today's call. <clears throat> and once you're registered, you'll have access to your organization's account on the platform, as I mentioned. And so we want to start in today with just walking you through uh, just a quick overview of your dashboard, where you'll find some of the key tools that you'll need. And then we'll dig in a little bit more to those that you'll be spending more of your time uh, using and customizing. So uh, a quick look at the dashboard at the very top, you'll have your overview screen that's going to give you your key metrics as well as a to-do list, have five quick items to complete on that to-do list. This is a great way to kind of look at the completeness and preparedness of your organization's profile for the event. Now, if your nonprofit has participated in the past, you may have all of these five items complete. That doesn't mean that it doesn't, uh, your profile doesn't need a quick refresh this year, um, but the to-do list can be a helpful place to start and make sure that at the very least, you've completed all of those five items. Your fundraising uh, tab on the dashboard, that's where you're gonna access your organization's profile page. This is the key page that you will customize and share for Live PC, Give PC. It's also where you can manage any campaigns if you have individuals starting peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your organization, or if you decided to start a team uh, fundraising campaign for Live PC, Give PC, you can access that all there. Uh, you can also access matching grants, customize your donation flow, uh, lots of important uh, things you can do there. Next, you'll have a uh, reports tab. This is where you'll get all of your donor data. Of course, uh, donation data will be available to your organization in real time during the campaign, as soon as donations open. 
and you can always uh, view or download the information at any time. Uh, you'll also have other reports here, offline donations report, donor retention report, um, and uh, disbursement report. So that's that's going to be your key tab for uh, all the data you need for Live PC, Give PC. And then finally, the settings tab at the bottom. This is where you're going to manage and update all of your settings, including, as I mentioned, the um, admins for your organization. So we'll start here with the profile page. Again, this is the main link that you'll be sharing with supporters. So you'll want to customize the look and feel of this. Uh, tell the story on this page about why donors should be giving to your organization as a part of Live PC, Give PC. And we talked just briefly about how COVID might be impacting your messaging this year. <clears throat> so this is a great opportunity to think about how you want that message to be uh, built into your page. Of course, your overall message is going to come through on email and social media, et cetera. But having that consistent messaging across all the different areas where donors are hearing from you about this year's campaign, it's a great way to um, really complete that, uh, make sure it is consistent across all channels, and tell that story here on your Live PC Give PC page as well. So the first thing that you'll do to customize this uh, page is edit your theme. That's going to be right at the top of the page on the left hand side. You have the ability to upload your logo. It's going to be a one to one aspect ratio. So that's going to be the same aspect ratio as you would have for Facebook, Instagram, etc. So you should have uh, this aspect ratio logo ready at your disposal. You can upload a background image. If you don't have an image, we do have a gallery you can select from. Uh, that can be a great uh, a great intermediate step if you're looking for an image um, or you don't have one yet, uh, you can always take advantage of the gallery. You have the option to add a filter over that background image. So depending on what type of image you have, if you need a filter to help the logo uh, pop, stand out on top of that image, you can play around with the color and the strength of that background. And then finally, you can select a theme color for the page. So that's that green color that you're seeing here you can tie in with your organization's logo. Uh, you'll have the option to select that theme color and that will carry through the remainder of your page. So next, you'll get to really the meat of the page, what I was mentioning before, the ability to tell your story. And you have access to an inline editor, so telling your story is not just dropping in a block of text, although you could do that. Um, we always encourage you to add formatting, headers, uh, lists, bullet points, um, images, video, uh, links, whatever you can to make this story more dynamic. Um, we know that donors don't have a long attention span for reading, so the most important information that you want them to glean from your page, make that pop out at them, whether that's in the form of a video, an image, or big bolded text, whatever it might be, you have a chance to make this dynamic and it's all on page editing using that inline editor right at the top so you can see what you're doing as you're doing it to build a good looking story. Next, uh, especially for those organizations that have participated in the past or maybe participated in another event on Mighty Cause platform, you wanna reset your metrics for this year's campaign. So if you go to your page right now and you see that there is there are donations and dollars showing in the metrics at the top of your page, you'll want to reset those metrics so that when this year's campaign and giving actually kicks off, you're starting fresh from zero. And then your team knows, as well as donors and visitors to your page, know uh, exactly what you've raised for this year's campaign in particular. Uh, so uh, right again, on page editing, you'll have the ability to decide do you want to show the dollars or do you want to just show the number of donors to your page? Do you want to show any offline donations if you have those? And then what time period, what date you'd like to start calculating? We'll cover this more uh, a little bit later uh, in the webinar, uh, but you'll want to start get that calculation from the day that early giving starts for Live PC Give PC this year, which is September 6th. So you can customize that all right on the page. 
Um, and then you also want to, um, you have the option to add a progress bar to your page. So if you do have a specific goal, $5,000, $10,000, whatever it might be, you can add an optional progress bar to your page. And so as you have donations come in throughout the event, your page will uh, show the progress along to that goal. You also have the option on your page to add additional sources of media. Uh, you can upload images in a media gallery. You can connect an Instagram account so that uh, your uh, any new photos you post on Instagram are automatically updated on your organization's profile page. And finally, you can customize your social share settings. This is something you'd access in the settings tab of your page, um, but you can have a specific social share image, for example, if you'd like to encourage um, more of your followers to share uh, if you are creating a specific share graphic for this year's event. <clears throat> Again, I mentioned the reports tab a little bit earlier. Uh, this is where you'll get all of the data that your team needs and wants for this year's campaign. Uh, so, First, uh, anyone who is an administrator for your organization will automatically receive an email notification whenever a donation is made. So that is the standard by default. If you have the wonderful problem of getting way too many donations on LivePC GivePC and you don't wanna receive those notifications by email, you can always go into your user profile on the platform and change your uh, email settings. And at any time, whether you're receiving those notifications or not, any admin is able to log in and access all the donor data in real time. So on screen, you'll see a um, quick overview of your donations report, key data from each donation, but you can always download as a CSV and it will give you all of the relevant information uh, associated with the donation. Uh, I mentioned before, but there's a number of other reports available to you in this section. Uh, recurring donations, if you do have any donors that set up recurring donations, or if that's something that you perhaps choose to focus on this year during uh, the Live PC Give PC campaign, uh, it is a strategy to consider. And in uh, a time like this, when uh, stability has become a really important rallying cry for a lot of nonprofits, uh, the idea of maybe asking for smaller amounts in a recurring gift might be something that appeals to either your nonprofit to consider for your strategy or for your donors. If you do have recurring donors on the platform, you can access this report in particular and it'll give you all the information you need to know about when their next uh, donation is set to process, uh, when their card's going to expire, you have the opportunity to communicate with those recurring donors through the platform. So um, really easy tools to manage those relationships and keep those donations recurring uh, to support your organization in an ongoing way. Uh, offline donations report uh, to add offline gifts. And then, of course, uh, your disbursement report. So um, funds will be dispersed on a twice monthly basis via electronic funds transfer. So it is a quick and easy process to sign up. And once you do sign up, you'll receive funds twice a month. If you don't sign up for electronic funds transfer, which is free, by the way, uh, you will receive a check. Uh, the check donations are batched once a month. So all donations received in the month of November, for example, would be sent by a check uh, around December 10th. Um, and it is a theft of $5 check fee. So we definitely encourage all organizations to sign up for direct deposit if possible. And then however you receive your disbursement, uh, you can access your disbursement reports here in this reports tab, and it'll give you a very detailed breakdown of exactly what donations are included in each disbursement, any fees, uh, all that relevant information. Um, so I mentioned offline donations earlier, uh, so that there is an offline donations report in your uh, reports tab. <clears throat> While offline donations don't count for leaderboard totals as a part of uh, the event, uh, they're certainly a valuable thing to uh, add and talk about as a part of your campaign. So if you do have a donor that decides to make a gift offline outside of the platform and you'd like to uh, recognize and reflect that donation as a part of your uh, page totals, you can do that. You can go to your offline donations report. There's a button right at the top that says add offline donation. You can add these details here and it'll add that gift to your page for display purposes. 
Uh, again, uh, when I talked about the page metrics, I mentioned this, you can decide whether these page metrics reflect offline donations or just online donations. So flexibility there, um, but again, these offline donations don't count for leaderboard totals. It's just a good opportunity for your organization to showcase all the giving that's happening as a part of LibPC GivePC. <clears throat> You'll also have the opportunity to customize the donor experience on the platform. So of course the donation process is something that is uh, built into the platform. And it's something that we review, test, monitor on a very regular basis to make sure that we are improving conversion and that it's a really seamless experience across any device that a donor might be giving, phone, iPad, laptop, etc. cetera. Uh, but within that structure, we do have some opportunity for your organization to customize the experience. So you can decide what data you'd like to collect from donors, um, whether you'd like to collect address or phone number or company, for example, uh, that is uh, flexible. We always encourage you to consider what data you're asking for and how critical is it because you don't want to ask too many questions of donors when they're making their donation and slow them down in the process. But if there's important information that you want to collect that will help you in your stewardship and follow up and building your relationship with these donors, then it's absolutely uh, a good idea to ask those questions in the donation checkout. You also have the ability to set um, four suggested donation levels. So, uh, for example, $25 buys um, school supplies for 10 children in your program for a semester. At whatever it might be, every organization is going to have a little bit of a different spin on this, but it's a nice way to really uh, reinforce the impact and and make the impact of a donation more tangible to the donor as they're making their gift. You can also choose whether you'd like donors to be able to leave a dedication with their donation or uh, if you have specific designations that you'd like them to be able to select from within your organization, you can do that. And finally, once you've made all these customizations, you have the option to preview the donation experience and see what it's going to look like for a donor. So everything I just talked about in terms of customizing is all about the donor going through and completing their donation. You also have the ability to customize what happens right after they complete their donation, the thank you experience. So again, this is uh, available <clears throat> in uh, the post checkout tab. You'll have the ability to build a thank you page. Again, you'll see an inline editor just like you have on your um, profile page. You can add photos, videos, uh, links, etc. So you can build that thank you page. That's what donors will see when they complete their gift. And then you also have the ability to add custom messaging into the thank you email, uh, the thank you receipt that is sent automatically to donors. Uh, and again, here you can preview the experience. So once you've built it out, you can preview that thank you page. You can send yourself a sample receipt uh, so that you'll know and maybe your executive director, uh, whoever needs to know on your team can really have confidence in knowing uh, what the exact um, start to finish donation experience will look like for your donors. Um, so matching grants is another um, really great tool that you'll have access to under the fundraising tab of your dashboard. <clears throat> so uh, on the platform, matching grants are really meant to be an, a display tool primarily to allow you to add more excitement to your campaign. So you don't have to have your matching donor make their gift online. Uh, they certainly can if they want to, but it's really about giving your organization a way to encourage those donors and visitors to your page that they have even more incentive to make their gift. So of course, um, part of what li makes LivePC GivePC so exciting is that, that sense of urgency, the, the 24 hours, the additional prizes that the community foundation shares, um, and uh, the, you know, the ability to be a part of this focused campaign, that's what encourages your donors to give now instead of maybe waiting till the end of the year. Um, but you have the option to add a matching grant, which just adds another layer on top of that urgency. One provides more incentive for your donors, um, but it also provides that additional layer of urgency. And there's lots of flexibility uh, within the tool. You can have a one-to-one -one match, you can do a triple match, double match, uh, or you can decide to have a match that um, 
is only met if you reach a certain number of donations uh, to your page. So lots of flexibility within the tool there. Again, um, it's up to you and your, and your donor what the interest level is, um, but the goal is really to help give you an additional tool to communicate to your donors, both on the page and then off the page in your emails and social media posts throughout the campaign. Uh, your campaigns tab is another tab that you'll have access to under your um, fundraising tab. This is, as I mentioned earlier, where you'll manage any fundraisers that perhaps your organization starts, if you have a team or event fundraiser that you're hosting, or if uh, individual, individual supporters, excuse me, are starting peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your organization. You can access quick stats and contact information for those peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers uh, to kind of cheer them on and encourage them throughout the campaign. Um, something that we'll definitely talk more about in the strategy webinar uh, and a, a bit later on today uh, is really the, the concept of engaging peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers uh, can be a really incredible tool to amplify your campaign. And of course, you'll be able to download any uh, reports here. You can start new fundraisers here. Uh, and a new tool this year, um, for anyone that has participated in the past, there is a new tool available on the platform where you can create a fundraiser template. So let's say, for example, you have uh, a number of your board members that are going to start a fundraiser for this year's Live PC Give PC campaign. You can create a Live PC Give PC template for them, uh, fill out all of the um, main areas of their fundraising page, and then it just helps them fast track through the process when they come and click fundraise right on your organization's page, they'll automatically get to take advantage of that template you've created, and it'll make it a lot quicker for them to uh, get their page published and ready to start accepting donations. So again, those fundraiser templates, uh, you can create that right from your campaigns tab. <clears throat> Settings, the final uh, item down on your dashboard uh, is going to be where you uh, manage some of the uh, overall administrative tools uh, on the platform. So, of course, as I've already mentioned, the ability to add or remove administrators. That's definitely a great practice to uh, check in on this once a year uh, or a couple times a year. Make sure that everyone on your team that needs access has it. And if there are people that are no longer with your organization, you can really easily remove them. You're also able to update uh, things like your uh, display name and address on the platform, your legal name and address on the platform. If something changes with your name or address, we do need documentation, but you can provide that, uh, upload that right through the tool here so that it can get approved. This is also where you can sign up for electronic funds transfer disbursement, as I mentioned earlier. It's a quick and easy process to get this uh, EFT disbursement set up, and you can do that right through your settings. Um, and lastly, I mentioned the social share as well earlier. Uh, here's where you can customize that social share experience and the end of your uh, URL for your LibPC Give PC page. So we've we've covered the majority of the items of the. Uh, strictly basics how-to on the platform. And now, for those of you that are new to Loop PC Give PC, uh, again, whether your organization is new altogether or you're just new, uh, we're just gonna cover briefly some high-level strategy tips for you to keep in mind as you start your campaign planning. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will have a webinar coming up later in September that digs much deeper into strategy, focusing on communication strategy, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising strategy. We'll talk about donor retention as a key strategy for returning organizations uh, and the tools that you have on the platform to make all of those um, strategies a part of your campaign. Um, but we wanted to just cover some high-level things uh, today to, to get the ball rolling. So the very first, if you haven't uh, taken advantage of or checked out the nonprofit toolkit yet, I definitely recommend doing that soon. There's tons of great tools, resources available there, <clears throat> both you know, the training today, uh, once we are finished, the recording will be available there. You can also sign up for that next webinar that I was just mentioning. Uh, aside from that, there's a ton of uh, tips, 
FAQs, templates for emails, social media, um, all kinds of great stuff, as well as logos and photos so that you can uh, not start from scratch and recreate the wheel with your own uh, marketing campaign, uh, but take advantage of resources that have been prepared for you. I mentioned earlier that uh, early donations start for Live PC Give PC this year on September 6th. So of course, this uh, event is really all about bringing people together on November 6th, this 24-hour uh, marathon of giving, but it's always a great idea to start securing some donations early to build momentum up for your campaign, get some of those uh, early supporters to, to help make donations so that uh, when you kick off all of your marketing on the big day, you've already got some seed donations in on your page. These donations are processed immediately. So if somebody comes in, makes a donation on September 7th, for example, their donation is processed immediately. They get a receipt right away. You can see their data right away, um, but it just counts as a part of Live PC, Give PC. So it's a great way to either activate some early supporters or if you know somebody's not gonna be available, for example, you can go ahead and start securing those donations early. Uh, I mentioned just briefly before the power of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, as I will talk about this more in the next webinar, but it's really something that I'd encourage you to consider uh, whether, whether you're new to this campaign or not, whether your organization has really dabbled in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before or not. Um, we always see uh, or a lot of organizations not taking advantage of this opportunity as a part of a giving day, but it really can have such a significant impact on your total number of uh, donors for the campaign. As, and as Christine mentioned, that's really the goal here is, is to help activate and engage and bring on new donors to support all local nonprofits. And one of the best ways to do that is to get your existing supporters who are already donors, already a part of your network, activate their networks. So you may not have you know, a donor's mother's email address and a donor's uh, coworker's email address, but that donor does have this whole network of individuals uh, that would be willing most likely to support the efforts that they are doing uh, to fundraise for your organization. So it's a great way to really expand your network uh, reach out to new people, and it gives you the opportunity to tell some some new stories. Uh, if you do have a volunteer or a board member or a monthly donor or a former staff member or somebody that's been served by your programming in the past, the, the options are endless. Um, if they're willing to start a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for your organization, they likely have a great story, a personal story about why they support your organization why they're willing to ask their friends and family to donate. And that's a really great tool for your organization to be able to add to your toolbox of um, other types of uh, stories of impact, other ways to talk about the great work that you do and from other perspectives. And so with that, um, we've covered some of, as I mentioned, the key strategies that we wanted to talk about today. Uh, we'll really dig more in on the next webinar. I encourage you to check out that toolkit for uh, more detail on strategy templates, uh, as well as FAQs and how to's on the platform as well. If you're having uh, questions on the platform, um, you can always access our customer support team at support at mightycause.com email address. Uh, we do have a phone number as well. So if you need help and you'd rather just chat with somebody on the phone for a few minutes and go over your questions, we're certainly available for that. Uh, and lastly, we do have a support forum with tons of resources, how-to articles, uh, walk-through videos. So um, lots that's going to be support.mightycause.com uh, lots of great resources available for you there so with that i'll go ahead and see if we have any questions uh, great question about uh, if we do decide to sign up for eft how are we notified when the deposit is made uh, you will receive an email uh, anyone who's an administrator for your organization will receive an email notification whenever an EFT disbursement is sent. Um, 
we send those same email notifications when a check uh, is sent. Um, so you'll receive the same uh, type of notification uh, with a link to come in and access the uh, detailed disbursement report uh, on the platform. So hopefully that is helpful. Um, and just adding one more piece of information here, uh, because LivePC GivePC happens November 6th, if you do decide to sign up for EFT, uh, that's a great way to make sure that you get your funds more quickly. Uh, all You will receive all your funds from the event by uh, right around November 25th. And if you elect to just stay receiving your funds by check, it won't be until uh, December 10th that you'll receive the check. So um, it's a great way to get your funds a couple of weeks uh, earlier for the campaign. All right, um, I don't see any other questions. So uh, Christine, unless you have anything else to share, uh, we can go ahead and let everyone get back to the rest of their day. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. And like I said, go check out the nonprofit toolkit, sign up for our next webinar, access the resources, uh, and you'll also be able to access the recording to today's webinar on the toolkit as well. Great, thank you so much, Bethany. This is Christine again. I don't have anything else to share either. I think that was incredibly thorough. Um, but as I said at the beginning of the call, in case any of you missed it, uh, reach out to us if you have any questions at all throughout this entire process. We're here for you. You can always contact me at uh, Christine, that's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, at parkcitycf.org. Thank you. Great, thanks, Christine. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, good luck with your Live PC Give PC campaign, and we look forward to catching you on our next training.